Welcome to Worship for Sunday, September 24th, 2023, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. The scripture today is one very familiar Psalm 91. Hear God's word for us. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and defense. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent will, you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Here ends this reading. May God bless it to our understanding. Last week with Psalm 46, we talked about trusting God no matter what happens in the world. Today's psalm has a very similar theme, trust God, but takes on a much more personal nature. Psalm 91 speaks in intimate, tender terms, dwell in the shelter, abide in the shadow, get close and personal with God. It speaks about living so close to God that we are always safe, that we always know we are loved. It's believed that this psalm was originally a soldier's psalm, perhaps even written from the battlefield, speaking of arrows and enemies and thousands falling by your side. Psalm 91 has come to be the central psalm for anyone who seeks and needs God's comfort and God's strength. It, it is a psalm for the vulnerable and the outcast, reminding us all that God stands with those who are in need. At all times, in all places, God stands with us to protect us, to provide. The images of the psalm are really fabulous. Uh, from, the verse, from the first verse, with the, the great protecting mother eagle uh, covering the child with a wing, protecting and providing, teaching, tending, shade by day, terror, uh, shelter from the terror at night, dwelling with God, living in the presence of God. The psalm declares protection from anything that might harm, terror and arrow, pestilence and storm, snare and pit, day and night, rain or shine. God is with you now and always. God loves you always. Some of the images are meant to invoke the ancient responsibility of hospitality. Uh, if a guest came to your household, uh, or a new person entered your family, it was your responsibility as the host to protect, to provide everything that guest might need or even want. Uh, it was a duty, a responsibility. No greater shame could be thought than allowing a guest to suffer in any way. The image in this psalm is that God is the host. We are the guests in God's household and therefore under God's protection. We have been taken in, we have been sheltered, we now dwell with God. As the greatest possible host, 
God will protect. God will provide for us. God will give us everything we could ever need. The scripture says, you know my name. We know exactly who God is. We can trust God, absolutely. God will protect. God will provide. God will love. God will save. Count on it. Trust God. There are two interesting twists on, uh, in uh, Psalm 91 uh, that take us even deeper into these ideas and images. The first is in verse 1, which, which says, You will live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, who will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. The depth is in the word shadow. Abide in the shadow of the Lord Almighty. When you first hear about a shadow, apart from this scripture, if you think someone says something about a shadow, you think of darkness. Uh, someone casts a shadow over an idea. Shadows in the corners of dark rooms and alleyways. Uh, there's a mystery in the shadow, the unknown. Maybe even the dark and dangerous when you hear the word shadow. The idea that we are in God's shadow opens a whole wealth of new ideas. Perhaps even in darkness and fearful moments, God is present. God is in charge. God is with us. Even in darkness and shadow, even in difficulty and pain, God is with us when we're afraid. Darkness may not be darkness at all. Rather, even darkness, or what we perceive to be darkness, outlines the very presence of God. We are in the shadow of the Almighty, under the influence of God, uh, protected even when we cannot see what is around us, even when we cannot see the light, still the light of God is with us. This idea of the shadow of God reminds us of another image. Uh, just think how close you need to walk to walk inside someone else's shadow. If we abide in God's shadow, if we live in God's shadow, just think how close you have to be. How close you must be to God to be in God's shadow. So close that nothing can separate you. We dwell in God's shadow. We live there, right next to God, in the very footsteps of Jesus as we follow. It's a great image. You walk so close to God in God's shadow. You walk so close to God that, that you live in Jesus' shadow. The other interesting twist in this psalm is how it was used in the temptation of Jesus. As you may or may not remember, uh, as Jesus started his ministry, he was baptized, and then he went out into the desert for 40 days of preparation where he, where he was tempted by Satan. Satan put three challenges to Jesus. And the second temptation, the second challenge, Satan took Jesus to the highest point in the temple and then quoted this psalm, Psalm 91, and said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, Psalm 91, written, he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone, the devil says. To which Jesus replies, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Uh, in other words, Jesus says, even Satan can quote, or misuse scripture. Be careful how you read scripture. And even more, be careful how you test God. Do not test God. Rather, trust God, which is the real point of Psalm 91. Trust God. In all circumstances, trust God. Jesus, of course, knows the point of scripture and not only trusts God, but calls us to do the same, calls all of us to trust God. God does not make promises 
to test us or tempt us. God does not want us to think that we are chosen and perfect and more right than others and we can do anything we want. God wants us to know that we are loved. The protection God offers doesn't mean, doesn't mean we are indestructible. Doesn't, God's protection means we are loved. It's not that bad things will never happen. They will. The writer of this psalm knew that. The soldier who wrote or felt this psalm knew that bad things happen. The person who was afraid in this difficult circumstance knew that God was not promising nothing bad would ever happen. Rather, God promises that when bad things happen, God is with you. Guaranteed. God will love you. God will hold you. God will carry you. God will give you what you need to get through anything that happens, good or bad. God will give you what you need. Surrounding with a sheltering wing, offering a shadow or closeness to sustain. Grace to get through it. And the spirit to rise again. These are the promises of God. God will give courage and strength, inspiration and purpose, community and belonging. God will give you whatever you need each day to make it through to the next day and the next and the next and so on forever. God will give you what you need, whatever you need. Whatever is happening in your life now, for good or for bad, whatever is happening, trust God. Stand close in God's shadow and be surrounded by God's grace. Feel the presence of God with you. You are loved. You are saved. Jesus loves you. God is with you. Trust God. Believe. Amen.